Hello everyone. Welcome to this campaign. In this campaign, basically we have a three kind of lecture series. The first one is the unit wise lecture series in which we will cover all the topics in the unit briefly and to the point. It will be helpful when you are starting the unit and when you are revising the unit. The second one is the expert talk in which we will cover all the research oriented topics that will be helpful for finding the research gap and when you are going for the higher study. The third one is a very interesting series that is the innovative and creative talk in which we will cover all the innovative and creative ideas that are happening around us for helping the human being. So all of you are welcome because this campaign is not for the commercial purpose. It is for the helping the people. So without wasting the time, let's start our today's session. And before that, be happy and make other happy. Hello viewers, how are you? Are you ready for innovative and creative talk series? The topic of today is nuclear fusion, the energy of tomorrow. Delivered by Harsh Srivastava, final year student, electrical engineering department of Triple MUT Gorakhpur. Let's start this very interesting series for adding knowledge on add-on knowledge. Over to you, Thank Mr. Harsh. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Today, I wish to talk about future energy prospects and why nuclear fusion stands out as the ray of hope. As for the outlines, we will be discussing many things. Firstly, the current global energy outlook and the future trends, and then why we are we talking about nuclear fusion and then what is nuclear fusion and then we will see some examples we will see how we have managed to achieve fusion on earth the methods and the reactions involved and the current scenario at the end we will conclude with a question about should we use or not the current world energy outlook regarding fusion. Now, since the industrial age, the world has exponentially growing energy demands due to explosive population growth. There are currently 7.5 billion plus people and they all need energy to live. We have burned fossil fuels at an increasing rate ever since we discovered them. Now, the carbon dioxide, as we know, are a major problem in today's scenario. It forms a very small fraction in our atmosphere, yet it is responsible for most of the greenhouse effect that we see. And yet, as of 2019, we emitted 35 billion tons of carbon emissions. And another horrifying fact is that this emission rate is increasing every year at 2.9%. Which means that by, uh, by about 5 to 10 years, we are looking at a serious level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now, it is time to look for some other options of energy other than the fossil fuels. Because as we know, the estimated time for fossils are 53 years or so for oil and about another 110 years for coal. After that, they are gone. The only thing, the only sources which remains are the so are the renewables like the photovoltaics, like the wind, hydro, geothermals. But the problem with all these renewables is that they are highly condition specific. For example, with photovoltaic systems, it depends on many other parameters, like whether the weather is cloudy, it is rainy, or uh, at which part of the earth your plant is basically the solar irradiance is not 100% uniform on earth you can have lot of irradiance lot of energy output from some other place and you can have virtually no energy output from others likewise the wind hydro and geothermal plants are highly location specific you cannot install them anywhere the only option which remains 
to have a cleaner safer and better alternative is the nuclear power now currently as we can see in the graph this is the annual electricity production chart of usa you can see that nuclear plant is make nuclear power is making certain good progress there in uh, as compared to solar wind geothermal and other tidal sources but now the current world uses nuclear fission now we are what we are talking about here is nuclear fusion now so what is nuclear fusion as the as the term suggests the two or more lighter nuclei combine or fuse together to form one or more heavier nuclei now from where does the energy come the difference in masses of reactants and products appears as the energy released during the reaction and it is in accordance with the einstein's mass energy relation e equals mc square as we'll see in an example in the upcoming slides one thing to note here is that the fusion generates as much as four times the energy generated from fission if the same amount of nucleons or the same mass is considered the below reaction is when four protons fuse to form a helium nuclei this happens inside sun now why are we indeed talking about fusion reactions what are the advantages first off abundant energy as we'll see in the up upcoming slides the fusion requires raw materials which are very abundant in nature it uh, as we'll see as it is evident from the figure beside it it requires deuterium and tritium deuterium is 150 parts per million in the sea water and it is very abundant tritium however is a scarce element it has it is only 20 kg on the entire planet but we have developed another methods we have developed breeding methods as, as we will discuss later so in all the raw materials required are quite abundant in in nature sustainability now actually the point here is these reactions these uh, fusion reactions are highly sustainable in in, in themselves and since this the raw materials are available in such a huge quantity the nuclear fusion plants can act as a base load power source for many thousands of years to come and the another advantage no carbon emission at all virtually the plant generates little to no waste to speak of and carbon emissions are only uh, almost negligible if we consider other sources even if we consider nuclear fusion the carbon emission is lesser in nuclear fusion and no risk of meltdown no for uh, for example in the fission plants as we all remember the tragedy of fukushima the meltdown the catastrophic meltdown caused claimed lives of many people such incidents is not possible in fusion devices it is difficult to even reach and maintain the plasma state and at any disturbance would cause to cool down the plasma and hence the reaction stops we will discuss about this in later slides limited risk of proliferation now basically this this point basically means that that the device which we are intended to make is not a bomb it cannot be made into an explosive device and hence uh, it is a lot safer than all other uh, power generation sources and the radioactive wastes are very uh, short lived for example uh, a waste might be tritium which is an isotope of hydrogen actually it is the ingredient in the reaction and and yet it is also a, it is also uh, produce as a small quantity of waste but it has a half life of 12 years and it is very less very less uh, uh, radioactive very less reactive as compared to other power generation devices like the fusion like the fission now as of as of our sun we know that the nuclear fusion is the ultimate source of energy on our earth well not in fact on earth in fact in the whole universe 
न्यूक्लियर फ्यूजन इज द अल्टीमेट सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट सी आर सन इट इज फाउंड फोर पॉइंट फाइव बिलियन ईयर्स अगो इट इज अंट बॉल ऑफ प्लाज्मा हैज मास ऑफ अबाउट थ्री थाउजेंड टाइम्स दैट ऑफ द अर्थ द कोर टेम्परेचर इज अबाउट फिफ्टीन मिलियन डिग्रीज सेल्सियस and at such ultra high temperatures and at such due to such high pressure of the gravity the core is an ultra dense soup of subatomic particles that pressure and temperature is so high that the hydrogen at the core is not in an atom state it is stripped of the electrons and the core is basically an ultra dense place of all these hydrogen atoms all this hydrogen nuclei just whizzing around very fast speeds the thermo uh, in the core actually the thermonuclear fusion of hydrogen takes place what happens is that many hydro uh, two or more hydrogen nuclei fuse together at the core and they form helium nuclei as it is mentioned as it is evident in the reaction that is shown here two hydrogen nuclei fused and form a helium nuclei unstable helium nuclei which both again fuse to form a stable helium nucleus that releases a tremendous amount of energy uh, just picture this the sun converts 700 million tons of hydrogen into 695 million tons of helium every second ever since it was born the 5 million mega 5 million tons of energy uh, mass is equivalently converted into energy when being put into the einstein's mass energy equation e equals mc square that is a huge huge amount of energy that sun generates per second that much energy is equivalent of detonating 400 billion 1 megatons of nuclear weapons all at One second. Now, since we talked about how energetic our sun is, it would be, it would come in mind of everyone that, well, why should we, why should not we use the capability of sun on Earth? In fact, why shouldn't we bottle our star? It makes, it doesn't make sense at first, but when you think about it. it makes a lot of sense the mass of sun is about 2 into 10 power 30 kilograms and basically what happens is the immense pressure of gravity causes the atoms in the core to fuse and to form, uh, and to generate energy but on earth we cannot use that method we don't have that much gravity here we don't have that much mass here so the scientists became clever and they discovered two methods which we will be discussing in the further slides magnetic confinement and the inertial confinement first we'll talk about inertial confinement now uh, we'll explain the term step by step now this method was conceptualized in 1970s by focusing powerful lasers on a small pellet of fuel you can see in the image that the fuel pellet is very very small as compared to the human eye it pellets it contains micrograms of deuterium and tritium with a silicon plastic outer layer as we'll see as we'll see in the upcoming slides why we have chosen deuterium and tritium reactions now basically what happens is that this small pellet is kept inside a gold cylinder which is called hole rom as in the below infographic we can see that the fuel pellet is placed inside the hole rom and high, very high power lasers are fired into the cylinder which causes the cylinder to emit x rays from within so basically what happens is that there is a fuel pellet and it is bombarded with x rays from all sides it creates somewhat a pressure an equal pressure from all sides onto the pellet and it implodes in within 
it does not explode it implodes under the pressure it gets contracted by ever so small amount during the final part of implosion the core fuel reaches 100 times density of the lead and the temperature at the fuel pellet becomes 100 million degrees celsius then uh, it is quite a it is many more times the temperature of the sun's core now finally when the when the fuel pellet contracts the deuterium and tritium inside it due to high temperature fuse together and then it explodes and generates many times of energy as the input uh, compared to the input now however we will see that inertial confinement is not a very popular method but still it works in the us we have the national ignition facility which houses the the most important inertial confinement fusion reactors ever be seen ever since it was conceptualized now the next thing is the magnetic confinement fusion reactors this has gained a lot of popularity within uh, within the scientist community because it shows a lot of promise uh, now the tokamaks actually the term tokamak is a russian it means toroidal chamber with magnetic coil it was first developed by soviet research in 1960s it uses uh, as we have, as we know it uses magnetic confinement to heat the plasma and the, and to avoid its contact with chamber walls basically uh, a tokamak is like a toroid we have learned about toroid in our previous classes a toroid is a circular tube circular tube of circular hollow tube conducting tube within which the plasma can be confined in that tube we outline it with small solenoidal magnets as can be seen in the figure which generates magnetic field within the tube so that the plasma inside it gets confined and is circulating within the tube the purpose of the central the purpose of the central transformer which is present there is will, will be discussed in the upcoming slides now we use in tokamak we use the deuterium tritium fusion reaction now the next thing is what is deuterium tritium fusion reaction uh actually it was before the fusion rea- be- uh, before the development of these machines tokamak or inertial confinement it was first debated that which reaction should be feasible on earth and it was found that deuterium tritium uh, plasma can be achieved in quite a lesser temperature as compared to others however it is still 150 million degrees celsius but it is still lesser than all other alternative options so it is considered the most feasible fusion attainable on earth what we do here is that deuterium and tritium are given sufficient speed and sufficient energy to collide with each other to overcome the coulomb barrier when they fuse together they release about 17.59 mega electron volts of energy as it is shown in the infographic out of which 80% of the energy is carried by the neutrons which are generated and the remaining 20% energy is carried by the alpha particles now you see this reaction is occurring within a magnetic field so neutron being an uncharged particle is unaffected by the magnetic field and it as soon as it is made it collides with the walls of the toroidal chamber of the tokamak and delivers the energy so basically what uh, in a sense what is happening here is fusion generates two things alpha particles neutrons alpha particles with 3.5 mega electron volt or with the 20% of the energy generated are supposed to carry on the fusion reaction by uh, maintaining the temperature maintaining the energy level while the 80% of the new energy which is carried by neutrons it is supposed to be the energy output from the device so we are in a, we are in essence we are trying to gen, uh, make a device which is self sustaining and yet providing energy 
However, a big challenge here faced is, as uh, I discussed in the previous slide, the tritium scarcity is a big problem with these reactions. We need to address it so that uh, the reaction can be commercially viable. Now, uh, one of the methods that was proposed is the breeding of tritium. Now you see, tritium is a half-life of 10 years is not naturally occurring. It is like 20 kilograms are remaining on the entire planet. The tritium is, an, uh, is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen. We have supposed a reaction. We have assumed, uh, we have proposed a reaction that a lithium-6, lithium-6, which is a very rare isotope of lithium-7, uh, when it interacts with slow-moving neutrons, then it generates a uh, helium, uh, helium nuclei and the tritium. So, basically, this can act as a source of tritium for the reaction. Now, let us talk about the actual progress going on in the world. We have a machine, we have a tokamak called the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER. This is a concept of which India is also a big contributor. We must remember. This is a machine that is proposed to be built around in around 2025, which has to achieve certain goals. It should, it should uh, maintain a plasma temperature of 150 million degrees Celsius. We should be able to obtain 500 megawatt power output from this. And it should be able to sustain the reaction for at least 30 minutes or an, one hour or so. Because as, as the name suggests, it is an experimental reactor as of now. We are not really going into commercially available energy source. We are just trying to experiment whether this technology is worth working or not. So let's discuss the machine. The machine itself is a huge monster. It is a 23,000 ton machine. It is assumed to, is it, it is supposed to reach the plasma temperature of 150 million degrees Celsius. The machine has electromagnets. Electromagnets have stored a huge amount of energy, like the 51 gigajoules of energy. And yet, we are supposed to keep it at a low temperature. Now, how this, how this will be achieved is a very ingenious task. However, we'll see it in the upcoming slides. The electromagnets are supposed to be at low temperature. Why? Because uh, uh, we have seen about superconducting elements. And low temperature actually favors them. So, we are supposed to keep the electromagnets at a lower temperature. The electromagnets will be made of superconducting strands, which are about 100,000 kilometers long. That is like circumference of Earth 2.5 times. So, you can just navigate around the globe 2.5 times with that much length of wire. It, it actually took 8 years and 3 manufacturers to build that much amount of wire. And to keep all that at an ultra low temperature of 4 Kelvin requires a lot of effort. Well, we, we must be proud to uh, hear that the cryostat, which is an important unit of this machine, was made by Larsen and Tubro. It, uh, Larsen and Tubro got the contact in 2012 and it successfully uh, installed the cryostat of this machine. Now, what is the function of cryostat? It, the work of cryostat is to actually keep the temperatures low. Like what we require here is for, for 4 kelvins. The cryostat is there to make the temperatures low. And the, and the other important part is the central solenoid. As we'll, as I'll see in the further video, further slides, what is the actual purpose of central solenoid? For now, just let's just see how much massive this machine is in terms of even its smallest parts. The central solenoid is supposed to carry a current of 15 mega amperes. 
and the force which is supposed to handle is 60 mega newtons like the nasa space shuttles they are uh, they only gave a thrust of 30 mega newtons so you can see that this is like two times more powerful the maximum field achieved is 13 tesla which is like a thousand times more than the actual uh, magnetic field of the earth now uh we have discussed all this we have discussed the huge size of to uh, tokamax and we have discussed all the good portion now let's see why why are we still lagging behind and if the technology is so good then why don't we have fusion yet so there are basically two broad problems with magnetic fusion magnetic confinement fusion or the tokamak devices the first problem is related to heat transfer as we saw 80% of the heat has to be transferred out of the machine as the electric as the energy output while the 20% of the generated energy should sustain the reaction 80% of the energy is supposed to be in the energy output which has to be used in other purposes and for that the neutron should strike on a blanket now this blanket is a special material this blanket uh, has certain special coatings on it and the blanket is supplied by a helium liquid helium on the back of it so the neutrons are supposed to the neutrons are supposed to hit the blanket and the helium which is circulating behind it is supposed to take all the heat effectively and act as a coolant there and it is with these this helium that we are supposed to get the energy output from the reactor now the problem with this actually is that the energy obtained isn't enough for generation and sustaining fusion what this means as simple like not every atom not every nuclei in at the generator actually undergoes fusion now which is a problem because inside the sun you have gravity inside the sun you have lots of pressure from outside so the nuclei actually fuse lots of nuclei fuse but in on earth there is no we are not applying any kind of pressure we are just rotating and rotating the plasma in the influence of magnetic field and we are just assuming that reactions will occur on a certain rate however the reactions don't occur as much as we are intended to not at least up till now the second problem here is the magnetic confinement because we see the torus we see the toroidal geometry the the tubular shape of the torus and the magnetic field lines inside it cause the plasma to like confine in the innermost circular orbit so basically this this actually means that inside the torus the plasma is not evenly distributed it is like confined in the innermost circular orbit and it is not uh, at the outer orbits there is almost negligible plasma which is a problem which is problem because it can hinder the reactions so basically what we need as we can see in the previous slide yeah. so you can see that there is a central uh, coil like structure apart from the toroidal there is a central coil like structure that is actually the transformer uh, that is the transformer actually and that for that was what we are talking about the transformer ca should carry a current of 15 mega amps and the field which is generates is 13 tesla which is a lot of field so basically using a transformer to even out the plasma distribution the basic the most uh, disadvantages part of this is the transformer consumes most of the machine's power like if you give certain input to the machine a large fraction of it is consumed only by the transformer alone plus the coil length the coils are made of niobium tin wire and it took 8 years to make because it was such a lengthy wire 100000 kilometers it was very expensive also 
due to uh, due to the certain uh, dim, uh, due to the crowd stat this cannot actually work continuously because it gets heated up very soon it is a superconducting wire and hence it it gets heated up very soon so the crowd stat should be functioning the crowd stat should be functioning a lot so that it should uh, function correctly mm. basically that means that it can't work continuously and the transformer consumes most of the machine's power the atomic drift atomic drift is another yet problem with the magnetic confinement itself because not every nuclei you will see is actually orbiting in the plane of the torus For example if we see the diagram so all the nuclei are supposed to travel in the plane in which the torus is situated but sometimes that some nuclei just don't travel in the same plane and uh, and can get around with elliptical orbits the elliptical orbits uh, are not uh, advantages and not not uh, satisfactory with the tokamaks basically we have uh, certain problems with it the magnetic confinement is the big problem with tokamak now the another option apart from tokamak which uses magnetic confinement is the stellarator stellarators are basically a very clever uh, modification in the tokamak design it was initially proposed by dr lyman spitzer in 1950s to attempt to normalize the plasma distribution we already saw the problems with tokamak the plasma distribution is not even and to make it even we need a transformer the transformer comes with a high cost of operation and high maintenance further certain helical coils are introduced around the torus as we see in the uh, graphic shown below the design is very clever we have twisted the whole shape of the chamber so that the plasma uh, distribution gets normalized further there is seen that certain helical coils are introduced which further improve the distribution of plasma but actually this design was not very popular among the scientists because it was thought to be very difficult to achieve and it was not trustworthy at that time but with the advent of supercomputers the designs regained credibility and we were able to model how the plasma distribution will look like when we uh, design something like this helical tube so basically uh, we could say that the supercomputers gave a new birth to windows 3 7x this is a a stellarator which was first emitted to european union in 1990 and at in, and is initiated at max planck institute for plasma physics it is successfully undergone first test run and the basic reason why uh, it was being promoted because it has a better shaping of magnetic field and has a five fold symmetric torus now basically five fold symmetric torus it is a fancy term which means that the magnetic uh, the distribution of the plasma inside it is such that it is uniformly distributed all along the uh, inner area and this reduces actually the five fold symmetric torus reduces the magneto hydrodynamic drag that accompanies the plasma and hence if you if you have solved the biggest problem with tokamak then you can obviously you can hold the plasma for a longer time without any extra power uh, in the case of tokamak we saw that we need a central transformer which consumes huge amount of power but here with only a clever design and certain extra coils the plasma holding time was increased because the plasma could be confined more accurately and easily now let's see why windows 7 x proved to be better than itr solution 1 simple no transformer no extra power consumption 
and the thousand hundred thousand kilometers of wire all gone which reduces the cost significantly we will see in upcoming slide that the cost comparison was very uh, was uh, you can see in fact the cost on one hand you see windel team 7x with 1.1 billion dollar cost and the tokomac itr it is estimated 22 billion dollars which even goes further if you think about it so now the second solution the coil wiring uh, only a few wiring is required with windows 10 7x only a few 100 kilometers that that significantly reduces the cost however the magnets which required which are required are complex but it is more than comp compensated by fact that a transformer is present there with a 100000 of kilometers of wire superconducting wires even the third solution we proposed was that the magnetic fields are precise which means that confinement is better if the confinement is better the nuclear re fusion reactions which would occur on a higher rate basically uh, in i in, in the itr what happened that the due to improper confinement sufficient amount of reactions didn't happen just due to the lack of good confinement but here the confinement is better the magnetic fields are precise which means a better energy output and hence the confinement is better hence the plasma time is longer it is proposed that it should be up to 30 minutes and uh, maybe it can be but uh, as of now the windows 7x plasma times are uh, in the range of 15 to 18 minutes as of now it is proposed to be 30 minutes because we are uh, because they are improvising on the de designs but as of now it is 15 to 18 minutes which is a still lot lot better than all the previous tokamax because the times are low due to the improper confinement of plasma and the fourth and the final and the most important thing cost it is way too much cheaper than itr and a little further modifications would improve the plasma stability it would further make it a more viable choice for a fusion device now here we are with the comparison charts estimated time of uh, dispersal years the tokamak uses 30 years the tokamak is the itr is supposed to be fully complete in 30 years while the windel stain 7x is in, is is in fact completed and yet uh, we are just uh, the windel stain 7x is actually completed in design and in construction they are improvising on it they are improving the plasma times they are improving the stability they are improving the symmetry actually the windel stain 7x has been completed as of now they, they are just experimenting on it and improving it while the itr is supposed to be completed by 2025 or 2026 and due to certain factors the date may even be shifted a bit more years the cost as we compared earlier the cost of uh, windows 10 7x was hugely well, was quite very much low in the cost of the tokamak final cost is is supposed to rise for it yeah because there are many more parameters to keep in mind while construction while maintenance the cost of itr is supposed to be go even higher than 85 95 billion dollars while for the windows 10 7x uh, the cost uh, final cost is about 2 billion 2 billion dollars but basically uh, i won't say that it is the actual final cost it is just an estimate and they are still improving on it and actually it has gone uh, much more than 2 billion dollars it has gone about uh, 6 to 7 billion dollars but 
still it is lot more than iter if you compare both values iter is a massive beast it is an 840 meter cube size it is the that's the size of the plasma chamber here while the mendelstein 7x is a uh, quite small and it is only 30 meter cube of plasma chamber the magnetic field in itr tokamak is 13 tesla uh, due to the transformer which was the central part the transformer generates a lot of magnetic field and that is a huge problem while with windelstein 7x the magnetic field is only 3 tesla uh, it can work precisely and effectively even with smaller magnetic fields which gives it a huge advantage over the itr so basically what we talked about is the fusion reactors we promised that there is an unlimited energy to be had at no expense to the environment in something as simple as water you can you obtain deuterium from sea water it is highly abundant so it is no uh, different thing to say that you can obtain it in something as simple as water it can be the perfect base load power source for the future uh, in the current scenario we see that fossil fuels fossil fuel powered plants are the base load electricity provider uh, we are yet to integrate photovoltaic systems into the grids uh, and as of now the thermal power plants are the base load of ele uh, electric power but with the improvement of energy with the improvement of technology i think that nuclear fusion could be the next base load source of power for the future and even for thousands of years to come and windstream 7x is potentially the future of fusion reactors we only need to explore we only need to explore it however it is uh, it is the in the realm of science every option every opportunity has been explored and both iter and windstream 7x are now equally given uh, credibility and they are equally recognized and the both the uh, devices progress are equally monitored so i ask a simple question that upon learning all these uh, all these advantages that it is very uh, it is very environment friendly it is very uh, it can provide literally unlimited energy at very little cost like it is an estimate by some uh, organizations that upcoming 100 years or upcoming 100 or 200 years if the fusion becomes viable then your electricity bill is going to be reduced by a thousand times because once the uh, once the first power plant starts it would be continuously providing energy and it will even be self sustaining itself so basically all this means that the cost of electricity which you pay as of now can be reduced by 1000 times which is a lot in the when you think about it however there are some things there are some uh, important points with fusion that needs to be that should not be overlooked actually it is an unproven technology it is only theory as of now windstein 7x is indeed operating it has operated its first plasma test but still most of it is still in theory we know think how things work we know how reactions occur and we conceptualize that okay this much reaction should occur but we need to do it practically international thermonuclear experimental reactor or the iter is supposed to run its first test in 2025 and that would be the decisive moment in the mankind history whether fusion would actually work or not because since 1960s this was a hype that fusion could be the next base load of power plus the commercial viability is not certain because since it is an unproven technology it is an untested technology as of now and 
many tokamak devices which have been still which are uh, developed up till now are not that much efficient because uh, joint european torus G- jet there is a tokamak device joint european torus it is the first and only uh, it is the only toroid uh, it is the only tokamak which has made uh, certain progress in the area but still uh, it has given a lot less power output than the input power which is given to it so basically this is all a big question mark for us uh, we don't see much improvement in this area but we are hopeful and we are investing a lot of money here uh, so a uh, natural question arises that well we are wasting like billions of euros and billions of dollars on something unproven it is a kind of gamble if you see so why not uh, invest this much money and this much resources on some other technologies which have already proven themselves like the photovoltaics although there are certain disadvantages but uh, we can think about it we can uh, improve the uh, we can uh, improvise the materials we can improve on the material science uh, we can use an, uh, new methods of obtaining sun's irradiance so basically in every other every renewable source there is a scope of improvement so why should we go with fusion actually that is the big question mark that is a big gamble that we that we're playing but who knows if the payoff of fusion is unlimited clean energy then maybe it is worth a risk i think so why not that's a question that what if it worked thank you thank you for listening uh, thank, thank you guys uh, was a very nice presentation so let me Thank just you. conclude whatever you have uh, told and whatever i added a knowledge today so you have just covered the future trends then the nuclear fusion the advantages of the nuclear, uh, nuclear power then the gravity of the sun that is the greater than the gravity of the earth then you talk about the inertial conf- confinement fusion and in which you have covered the small fuel pellet which is a combination of deuterium and tritium and then the magnetic confinement fusion and then you talk about the tokamak and then after the tritium breeding technology and yes. you focus about the uh, itr that is the international thermonuclear experimental reactor and the goal of that it itr then electromagnet at lower temperature and you just given us the a proud feeling by talking about the larsen and tubro uh, that meant that made the prostate and maintaining part of that itr to maintain the temperature low and then you talk about the central solenoidal and problem with tokamak then one question uh, came in my mind and we'll ask in the in the last and then you talk about the stellarator for normalized plasma distribution given by the dr lyman spitzer then you talk about the wendel strain for better shaping of the magnetic field and then the comparison and in the last we are ho- hoping for the better future one question is there uh, where all these machines are installed it means uh, they are installed in india is there any scope that we can install in india in or it is working any area where uh, in india we can uh, go for that to visit that for the student uh, no sir unfortunately in india we don't have any machines of such kind because uh, as you as you saw in the slide that it takes a lot of it takes a lot of cost 85 to 95 billions dollars that is something which uh, a single country cannot invest on itself matlab uh, you you can see that india's budget yeah, yeah. is not my that question was if suppose any student want to uh, curious about to know all these things so they is there any a uh, visiting site like that 
so that is my point of view i'm not going to where it is installed my area was like uh, we can visit to the larsen and drobo to go to get a little bit idea about that so like that is there any place uh, research and development center where we can get the idea about w7x or itr do you have any knowledge uh, no sir i don't have any uh, that kind of knowledge but i did search actually... uh, if i will search if there will be any link i will post in the description box and uh, hello viewer uh, you can comment whatever the hearts ask in the last so what you think what the idea came after listening all these uh, knowledgeable things so comment in the below box and thank you very much uh, and yeah, you can feel also free to ask anything. yeah and you can also be a part of this campaign by uh, spreading knowledge on this add on knowledge channel so you are most welcome and thank you once again thank you everyone thank you sir for this opportunity